Sometimes, when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried. But actually, you've been planted. Hey guys, my name is Brendan Shaw. Today, I'll be telling you the story of how my life slowly came down and crumbled so that it eventually blossomed into my spiritual awakening. So I'm going to jump straight into the story and give you some context about what happened around three and a half years ago. So I was around 22 years old. This was beginning of 2016. And so at that moment in my life, I was always yearning for a girlfriend. I always wanted someone to love me. I always wanted to share my life with someone else. And so I realized that now looking back in hindsight, it's because I had no purpose. I had no central values. I had no morals that were solidified in my life. I had no strong why as to why I wake up every single day, why I'm put on this earth. I know that now, but back then, three and a half years ago, I had no clue. I had no clue what the hell I was doing every single day. I was just living a monotonous life, going through the motions, doing the things routine. And I didn't even understand why. I didn't know why I was doing the things I was doing. I was just doing it. And you don't want to be in there, guys. But if you're watching this video, there's a highly likely chance that you're already on the right path. So, yeah, I was 22 years old and I was just searching, searching outwards for what really can only be found inside yourself. And so, I was always looking for a girlfriend, wanted one my whole life, never had one up until this moment. And then I met this beautiful, smart, funny girl. I don't want to mention her name right now, but we got along really, really well. The chemistry was just out of this world. And our comedy, we had the exact same kind of comedy. We had the exact gluttonous habits. We had just a strong synergy. We just worked better together. And so we had adventures. We did things for the first time together. We just had a lot of fun. It was just young love. And I felt on top of the world, guys. I felt like a freaking god. I felt like, wow, my life has purpose now. So this is what I've been wanting for my whole life. And now I finally have it. And so when you finally get something that you truly want for such a long time, and you finally get a glimpse of that, man, you feel like you're on cloud nine. You're feeling like you could do anything. You feel like you're walking on rainbows. And so, long story short, I went on this emotional roller coaster, and then out of nowhere, it started to just drop like crazy, man. Like at this moment, things were just going crazy because the insecurities in both of us just exploded. I didn't realize how insecure she was. I didn't realize till now how insecure I was. And so now I realize your vibe really attracts your tribe. And so you attract what you are. And I used to always think that she was the one that was insecure, but now I realize that we we're both insecure and that's why we got attracted to each other. Not we didn't consciously know, but we were subconsciously attracted to each other because of our vibration. And so a lot of the insecurities happened, like just everything just blown out. Like we didn't trust each other as much as we did in the beginning. Or maybe it's just because we pretty much just didn't realize that we didn't trust each other from the start. But now we're starting to show the true colors started to show after four or five months. So I met her in January. It was around July. Sorry, it was actually around May, July, June, July. That's when it was starting to really bubble and fest on it. And so it was starting to show. And it got everything got really abusive both ways. Like there was freaking abuse verbally, mentally, emotionally, even physically, unfortunately. But I realized that that was what made me who I am today and I feel really bad about it but both ways it's no one's fault it had to happen and without that happening I wouldn't be we wouldn't be the people we are today as well as the people around us and so we pretty much kept going downhill 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 and I was feeling like shit man like 
I used to wait outside her house for hours on end. It was terrible. It was just, and it was just the most, I was the most beta male in the world. Like literally I would drive to her house, wait up to nine, sorry, up to six, seven hours, just waiting outside, hoping for her to open the door for me. And so I just felt like shit. I felt like I had no power. I did not feel like a man. And it wasn't until a few months later, until around my birthday, that I started to feel things in my heart. I started to feel the idea that I need to let go of this relationship. I need to just detach and just go our separate ways and then learn ourselves how we can be better for ourselves. And I kept getting this feeling every single day, but I kept pushing it aside. I kept telling myself, no, no, no. This is the one thing that I'm going to commit to. I can never commit to anything in my life, but this is the one thing I'm going to commit to. Every single job up until then, i would work for two months and then I'll quit. Or I'll get fired. Literally, up until now, I've had like 20 different jobs. And so, I kept telling myself and her that if I will commit to anything in my life, it will be you. You're the one thing that I will commit to and I mean it. That's the one thing. And I meant it. And so that's why it broke my heart even more when she told me that she didn't want to be with me anymore. So here I was thinking like, no, I'm not going to break her heart. No, I'm a man of my word. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the one that will make this relationship strong. And so you can imagine how shitty I felt when she told me that she didn't want to be with me anymore. When I was the one that thought that I was doing the right thing by not saying that I didn't want to be with her. And so I was crushed. I was just destroyed. I had all my love. Everything was just exploding and I just didn't know what to do. But at that point, I didn't really believe that she meant that because it was always like back and forth, back and forth. You know, it was always... Yep, no, nah, I don't want to see you anymore. One week later, we're seeing each other again. We're doing everything again. We're meeting up every single day again. And then it's a repeat, repeat process. It happened over and over and over again. And so when she told me that one last time, I was just like, it's just going to happen. It's, we're going to get together again. Nothing's going to change. And it wasn't until Valentine's 2017 that I really felt it. So what happened... The week before Valentine's, I booked an Airbnb. I learned how to cook spaghetti meatballs. I learned how to massage the occipital lobe in your neck. I learned all these things. I wrote a card for her. Like I wrote a poem as well. And so I felt like I was doing all that I could. I put so much time and energy into this one Valentine's thing. And then for just for her to reject me. So I went up to her. And I gave her a card and the card pretty much asked her if she wanted to come with me to the Airbnb, stay two nights and just chill for Valentine's Day. And she just told me no, straight up no. But for that hurt already. So I pretty much spent the time in the Airbnb by myself. But it wasn't until I spoke to a friend and this friend told me that my girlfriend at that time that broke up with me. She happened to be in Melbourne, freaking three hours away. She apparently she flew three hours away to spend Valentine's with her ex. Guys, can you understand how broken I was when I heard that? I was just like, what the fuck? Like at that moment, I realized that it was over. And there was no more chance. There was not a single glimmer of hope that would be, get be, would get back together. And so after I heard that, I was just like, okay, it's time to fully let go. It's really time to let go this time. There's no more second chances. And so looking back, I realized that that was the turning point for me. And the next day, I got a call from my auntie and she's like, Hey, Brennan, do you want to come to Perth? Guys, this is on the other side of the continent 
from Sydney. So she's like, do you want to come to Perth? I'm going to Japan. Come over for three weeks and look after my business. And so I was like, fuck yeah. Bought the tickets that same night. Flew out the next week. And then as soon as I got to Perth, life was freaking amazing. Now looking back with hindsight, it's probably because I was running away from my problems. But pretty much what happened was I flew to Perth, had some family there. I did everything that I've always wanted to do for the re for my whole life. Like literally, I started skateboarding. I started learning how to make coffee. Went downhill mountain bike bike riding with my boy Paddy. If you're watching this, love you, bro. I learned how to surf. Learned how to four wheel drive uh, in the sand dunes. We went deep sea fishing. I went vegan for like 40, 30 days. Got into yoga. Got into law of attraction. I read like 50 books within six months of like self development. I was just feeling on top of the world, guys. I felt like a god for real. I thought that my life could not get any better than it was when I was with my ex. But then when I went to Perth, man, life was just like, there's so much to see in this world, man. There's so much I need to do. And so, sorry, saliva, guys. So when I was in Perth, I was just having the best life. I was living in my best life. I was literally transcended my life and I just let go of so much bullshit. I let go of so much people, things in my life, like literally my house, I moved for the first time in my life. I've never left Sydney for more than three weeks for a holiday. This time I was gone for six months on the other side of the freaking continent. And so I felt freaking amazing guys. And so I really want to drive home that comment, that quote that sometimes when you're in a dark place, you may think that you've been buried, but literally you've been planted. You've been planted in the soil so that you could sprout and grow into a huge tree. And so I was in the blossoming time of my life in Perth. I, I freaking, I got to take care of my baby cousin. His name's Lu Lucas. And we, I pretty much took care of him when he was like four months to eight months with my auntie because his dad was always working fly in, fly out. So he would only come for a week every like three weeks. So I was pretty much the dad, the surrogate father, as he says, for the rest of the time. And I was just living my best life, guys, legit. And so looking back now, I don't want to say that anything, like I don't want, there's nothing that happened that my ex did to me that I'm, hating or like I haven't forgiven. I know for a fact that if things didn't happen the way that it did, then I wouldn't be the man that I am today. So I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not blaming myself. I'm just stating facts of what happened. And things were, we just weren't good for each other, but we needed to meet each other so that we could both grow from that experience. And so what I want to really say guys, man, the moral of the story is that most of the times the spiritual awakening happens when you're in your darkest moment. Because I felt like shit. I felt like I was getting into depression. I felt like I had no one in my life. I felt like I put all my energy into this one person and then for that person to just, just leave me. I was just like, if that's so easy to lose, then what is my life? What is my life anchored to? So I needed to find another purpose. I needed to find meaning in my life and morals and values to which could be solidified in my life. And I found all of that in Perth. Found the law of attraction. Talking about Perth is a whole nother story for me, guys. But pretty much that's it, guys. That is a story of how the breaking down of my life and the experience of that relationship helps me to blossom into the person I am today. And that was actually the start of my YouTube journey in Perth as well, guys, when I was posting about my fasting, my adventures. But guys, pretty much that's it. If you like this video, make sure you caress the like button. I felt like I was a bit rambly there, but if you like this kind of content, please make sure you comment down below and let me know what other kind of stories that you wanna hear from me. And I appreciate you so much for watching to the end end of this video make sure you click subscribe because i post every single tuesday thursday saturday sunday and thank you so much for tuning in again i'll see you next time